the only thing that interferes with my learning is my education. And it's about time we change that. If you have your smartphones, if you Google right now, university makes me. If you Google that right now, you know the first four automatic answers? Anxious, depressed, feel like a failure, stupid. Google, by the way, the tech giant, right? That happens to hire a lot of engineers. 15% of their staff doesn't have a professional college degree. Why? Because our education system is outdated. It was built in the 1900s. It was built for the industrial age. It was built for people to prepare themselves to live and have a creative life in the industrial world. It's outdated now. I can prove it to you. How many of you have a smartphone here? Great. How many of you had the same smartphone two years ago? There's some older generation people. Welcome back. If I had asked five years, nobody would raise their hand. If I had said 10 years, you'd be like, what are you crazy? We want the latest operating system in our mobiles, in our laptops, in our home appliances. But the, the platform that impacts the entire humanity is more than 100 years old, hasn't been updated. We live in the information age. This education, old standardized education model is based on linearity, conformity, and batching people. It's outdated. I would say it's almost getting obsolete, right? We, we live in the information age. Something that you learn in the beginning of the university is obsolete by the time you graduate. Peter Diamandis, he said, between 2016 and 2022, there will be as many technological changes, as many as we had between 1900s and 2000. That's more than 2000% growth. And that's just the beginning of the exponential curve. Many of the interesting jobs today that we have didn't exist five years ago. What do we do? We don't live in the age of standardization. We live in the age of customization. Let me tell you a story. Do you guys know this guy? Kevin Sistrom. So this guy worked in a marketing job. During the day, he would work in a marketing agency and he would come back home, take out his computer and start with his computer, start programming. Right? And he got so good at programming, he built an app called Bourbon. He later, after a few iterations, called that app Instagram. At the age of 28, he sold that app for a billion dollars to Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg, a college dropout. We live, we don't live in the age of standardization. We live in the age of customization and everybody can teach themselves. No two people are the same. How many of you have siblings? How many of you have siblings? Perfect. Did your parents ever come up to you and say, hey, come here, uh, remind me, which one are you again? <laughs> Never happens. Even if you're Indian, doesn't happen. There's half a billion people there. Doesn't happen. No two people are the same and neither should be the education journey. We all want to be unique, at least the original copy, right? And we are unique. Start designing your unique education. And it's never been easier. Did you know that all the classes that MIT students are taking today, you can go online and take the same classes for free. Not just MIT. You can go on edX.org. There's MIT, Harvard, Berkeley, some of the best universities in the world. Pick the courses you like. Take them. You guys know Udemy? You can go on Udemy and learn basically everything from programming to photography. Right? Turn your passions into your professions. You can do that. Most of the courses are less than $200. I've purchased courses in their promotion for $15. Right? You can do that. Start educating yourself. And that's the first key. Just the only one. The next one, here's how you take it to the next level. How many of you know this guy, Elliot Bisno? No one. Great. So this guy was a young... Uh, American entrepreneur living in US starting out as a digital entrepreneur at the age of 24. He felt really lonely. He didn't have, uh, he, he had a lot of unanswered questions. What he did, he picked up his phone, started calling uh, successful digital entrepreneurs in US and said, hey guys, uh, I stay in Utah. Uh, I'm inviting a lot of digital entrepreneurs. Why don't you come hang out with me? And you know what? I will pay for it. He took $50,000 on credit card debt and invited 50 different entrepreneurs for one trip. But then he was on to something. Next year, 200 people came and they paid. 
The year after, 700 people came and they paid. Today, he gave birth to what we call the Summit Series. People like Richard Branson speak at that event today. And he was voted as the coolest entrepreneur by Inc. Magazine in 2009, right? You know what he was doing? He was bringing together people with similar interests, similar pain points, and similar lifestyles. And that's the key. Find your tribe. We are social animals. We are naturally inclined to connect with people who are like us. Similar values, similar interests, similar belief system. Right? And we thrive in that environment. Right? That's, that's, the, that's where you share the latest practices. That's where you learn and uh, you teach each other. You learn and grow with each other together as a tribe. And when you find your tribe, something interesting happens. On May 28, 2017, I landed in Barcelona, about four months ago. And I joined 400 people from 50 different countries that said, we will relocate to Barcelona for one month and we go deep into personal transformation. We got together and we had some of the most incredible teachers in the world teaching us and having workshops every single day. This is Vishen Lakhiani, founder of Mind Valley. He's teaching us on advanced goal setting. This is Lisa Nichols, the star of the documentary The Secret. She's been on Oprah many times. She's teaching us the art of storytelling. Some of the most incredible speakers, UK's number one hypnotherapist, the guy who sold 20 million books, the uh, CMO of a billion dollar company, guy who trains Hollywood, uh, Hollywood actors on fitness, and the guy, the monk, he trained the sarcast of Doctor Strange. These are the kind of workshops that we were having. And, get this, in the evenings and on the weekends, we partied in the streets of Barcelona, right? We connected with our tribe, right? We had spaces to connect deeply and meaningfully with our people. And we call this experiment Mind Valley University. Now, what if this was part of your university? These are what I call deep immersions. Deep immersions are like, are like, you know, have you guys been to Disneyland? Yeah. Have you noticed at the end of the, uh, at the end of the day, kids are really sad. Some are crying. Some parents are trying to drag them off and they're like, no, daddy, no. You know why that happens? Because they just experience a deep immersion. Deep immersions are powerful. They are like. High, in, highly inspiring, fun, exciting moments that you experience. And the, uh, deep immersions are basically when you come together with your tribe and go deep into a particular topic for a very short period of time. That could be from like one day to like five days. And then stir some emotion, have a lot of fun and create a lot of lasting memories. Right? And these are your conferences, your events, your summits, your TEDx is a deep immersion. You come together as a tribe. Right? Your deep immersions are extremely important, and that's the third key. And your deep immersions go back, add into self-education. When I came back from Barcelona, I came back with a list of seven different books, three different online courses, and three classes I'm taking in Kuala Lumpur right now. Because I got, I got those things, got those ideas, right? Added back into my self-education. And this becomes the wheel of modern education. Self-education, my tribe, and deep immersion. And here's the thing the smartest people in the world, the outliers, the game changers, the moonshot takers, they never quit their education. They simply escape the outdated education system.